All right, so today we're going to be looking at the last track we uploaded, which was In the Fade by Queens of the Stone Age, and we're just going to kind of look at how we mixed it and some of the uh, Cracks different the plugins we used. So I'll let you listen to the entire track, and then we'll kind of go through uh, everything else from there. in the ceiling Cricket pictures in the hall Counting and breathing I'm leaving here tomorrow They don't know I'd never do you any good So, um, we'll just kind of start with the roads. So, um, we don't actually have a roads, so we just use the built in MIDI plugin that comes with Cubase. And we're using the roads plugin that they have here, or the roads type plugin. And, um, we took all the chorus out because we decided we'd add just a little bit of chorus in later, which I'll show you. But,. Um, it has this like built-in amp, so I turned all the treble down on the amp, turned up the mids and the bass, and then uh, turned the drive up a little bit, uh, which we also added a lot more drive in later. But um, I'll show you some of the other things we did here. Um, uh, find the road. So um So we put this uh tremolo on which is um not doing much. I mean just barely adding anything. I'll let you hear it without it. Just adding a little bit to it. Uh, we also added this limiter, which is uh, just a preset that I found. I like the way it sounded, so I left it in. Uh, then I added this saturation plugin. This is just uh, a Rhodes chorus preset that I like. Um, I don't think I messed with it very much. I think I, me I messed with the level, the, the mix over here, but that's about it. And then I added this EQ just to boost some of the mids and uh, just, uh, just barely boosting there but um that I'm really EQing this I'll let you know. yeah, it sounded really thin so kind of thickened it up a little bit with the EQ and um yeah so that that's just the roads part there uh, then we can move on to guitar. So, in the beginning here, there's just some feedback. Um, I left the amp running through this part just to add a little bit of the effect there. And then it goes into this 
part here, which this guitar just has a ping pong delay on it and the VST amp rack, which sounds amazing. Just kind of taking away some of the highs to uh, make it sound a little bit more muddy. Um, is doing there and this is just a DI track running through that this amp sim here which I'll show you the settings that I have on that so um, got the gain on A I left the, all of these settings just where they were and I uh, just turned the gain up a little bit um, these mics are set to what they were I think or maybe it was over here I moved it over here these are the virtual mics and um, yeah we didn't really play with amp settings that much we just did some EQ and uh, it sounded pretty good this gate is just to kind of control this ping pong delay so you can kind of hear what that does if we go back to <laughs> out some of the uh, feedback from the delay I think the gain may have been turned up a little bit on this one yeah and I added this compressor which I just cranked up all the way and I added uh, I took out some of the lows to kind of let the kick drum uh, breathe a little bit and I took out just some of the highs that were in there. It was a little bit too aggressive sounding. And it's with no And that's basically the only two parts in the song. Uh, only two guitar parts. Uh, well then we can look at bass. Which is just a DI with some EQ here. Uh, and I added this uh, Blue Cat Audio uh, Triple EQ, and I'm using the center bass uh, preset that was on here. And uh, I like the way it sounds in the mix. Kind of hear what it sounds like. can move on to drums uh, so here's what the drums sound like So I'll kind of take you through each part here. So for the snare, we used an SM57 on the top, uh, which is pretty standard. Uh, we had it backed away about three inches from the snare drum, and um, I'm just adding uh, this VST Dynamics preset, and I just mess with the threshold until it sounded right on the gate here. Uh, left the compressor setting how it was and that's what the snare drum sounds like without the gate and compressor and then we put that on so if we just listen to the snare by itself it really takes a lot of the bleed out because you can really hear that hi-hat and I needed to take that out so 
and to kind of get the uh, the impact on the snare up a little bit, I boosted the attack on this transient designer, and I also added some EQ at five around 5k over here just to kind of uh, make it a little bit more present in the mix. Also added this reverb. which sounds amazing. Um, that's pretty much it. I had to turn the gain up on this one. It wasn't recorded extremely uh, loud, so I had to crank the gain up, and that's why there was so much hi-hat bleed. Um, for the bottom snare here, uh, we're using a Audio Technica ATR2100, uh, which is uh, fine for just uh, for just um, the bottom snare, and um, we have the phase inverted here since it's on the bottom. Also added the transient designer and I'm boosting the highs from uh, at 2k all I'm adding a shelf there and uh, yeah so um, that sounds pretty good and um, let's see go there so you can hear what the snare with the bottom snare mic on sounds like Sounds a lot uh, more full with the bottom snare mic. For the room, we were using a two mic, which is a um, Superlux CMH8D, um, and we just had it about, I would say, ten or fifteen feet away from the uh, drums, and it sounds like this. Um, just added this compressor here. Um, it's just some general compression. I don't really like to compress the uh, room mic, but it was uh, extremely loud and it was needed a little bit of compression. Um, I'm doing some weird EQ here. <laughs> I uh, boosted the lows a little bit and I took a lot of the highs out because I wanted my overheads for that. I just wanted to get some of the beefiness out of the drums. So I added that room mic in and added a lot of bass. And I, like I said, overheads are where I got most of my high frequency out. I cut the lows out here and boosted the highs a little bit. Uh, took out some mids uh, sounds pretty good added the overhead compression there I don't think I did anything else but yeah and uh, I like the way the symbol sound with the setting I have on the EQ so I just left it how it was um, for the kick drum the kick drum does not sound amazing by itself because of the way I EQ'd it but I'll explain more on that. Um, so what I did was I am doing some extreme boosting and cutting here. So I'm boosting um, these highs by like 13 dB I think it was. and. I'm cutting all the mids out and cutting a lot of the low end out. The reason I did that was because of this track, which is just the same kick drum track if you listen to the kick drum without any of the plugins. That's without any plugins.
Oh, also the overheads were uh, CAD CM217s, which are just small diaphragm condensers, and the kick drum mic. Um, the kick drum mic was a Natty DM80, which is just a really cheap mic that comes with like a little drum miking kit, and I liked the way it sounded, so I used it, and we did a lot of affecting on it so um, but for the this track it's just the same kick track but I added this noise gate and it has this uh, frequency booster like a filter here and I've just boosted 50 Hertz all the way so it's just playing 50 Hertz out of this track and it sounds like this so it's sort of like a sub kick. I didn't add any EQ, or well, I left the normal kick drum EQ in, but it doesn't really matter, so. Can't really tell a difference because it's only playing 50 hertz. So, I mean, uh, and that kind of gives us the thud of the kick, so if you listen to it together. the entire kit together again I'll let you hear what the entire kit sounds like without any of the plugins and EQ enabled. And the only percussion track we have here is this shaker, which is a MIDI shaker obviously, and um, we just added that in. In the original track they had some sort of, sort of shaker, uh, and we added that in last minute. Laughing is easy. Um, next we can look at vocals. So for the main vocal, I didn't do much. Just EQ and compression. So I added a little bit of 5K here, which is pretty normal. Took some of the... Uh, really high frequencies out. It was a little bit sibilant, and we don't have a deesser at the moment, so I had to just to do it with a normal EQ. And for the compression, um, I've got this limiter six plug in, and I'm just using one of their presets, and I just tweaked the threshold and the ratio a little bit and it sounds pretty good so I left it how it was for the most part uh, and without the compressor cracks in the ceiling with it crooked pictures in the hall just evens it out a little bit uh, we can listen to it without the EQ Counting and breathing I'm leaving here tomorrow Just taking out a lot of the low frequencies to let everything else breathe a little bit. For the harmonies, I had the same settings for, uh, I'm pretty sure, all the harmonies, except some didn't have EQ, some of them didn't have uh, compression. This is the only one that has a pitch correct plug-in on it. And the only reason we added that was because my brother sang the, uh, some of the harmonies and I needed to add a little bit of bass to his voice. So I sang over the top of his vocal and added 
this. Live till you die. And I obviously added uh, some uh, shift there. Some shifted it to a little bit lower uh, octave. So if you listen to it without that. <laughs> Live till you die. Then I added that in. Live till you die. And that sounds like this in the mix. Live till you die. And then with my vocal. You can barely hear my vocal in the air. That was just. Uh, last minute thing that we added in. Um, let's see. Uh, I just added the same compression wherever. So same compression, same EQ there. I don't think there was anything on the. Yeah, just the tape saturation, but we didn't end up using that. Yeah. This section here uh, is very complicated. Sounds like this. Listen to the harmonies by themselves. <laughs> very difficult. To um, but mixed with the. Uh, main vocal, it sounds pretty good, so let you hear that. Losing a feeling that I couldn't give away. Um, that's pretty much it for vocals. Um, let's see, for the drum bus, so we can kind of look at some of the stuff I did. I just added this drum bus compressor, which is just a preset. Uh, with, of a plugin that comes with Cubase, and um, it's just doing a little bit of compression just to kind of keep the drums even. Uh, same here, just adding a built-in compression compressor with the EQ that I same EQ I used on all the vocals again. Um, for the master bus, I just use this master bus compressor, which again is built in. Um, that's it for the master bus. And then I also did some automation on the harmonies, which we can look at. Um, so all of these green uh, R's are the ones that I automated, so we can go to where you can kind of see some of the automation I did start it right here um. <laughs> if, you just, uh, if you just watch these here you'll kind of see the automation so. it's easy. So it was mainly just bringing up parts and taking parts out that I was doing. So um, I think that's pretty much it for this mix. Um, see, the only other part was this guitar part at the end, which is just uh, strumming the same part over and over, same amp settings. <laughs> fades out from there. That was the only other part. Uh, the rest of it was the same. Um, 
So, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Crags in the ceiling, crooked pictures in the hall.